We live in a world that runs on data. It's how Amazon and Netflix know which movies and products to recommend, how Starbucks manages a global supply chain, and how Uber connects drivers with passengers in real time. But the thing is, data skills aren't just for tech companies or professional analysts anymore. Everyone works with data to some degree, and everyone can benefit from data literacy skills. In this video, we're covering an important topic that will help you take your data literacy to the next level. When it comes to transforming raw data into insight and ultimately action, you need to think like an analyst. That means identifying the problem, setting clear expectations, collecting and analyzing the exact information you need, and leveraging insights and findings to influence decisions and real-world outcomes. So here's a great analytical thinking framework that we often teach here at Maven, which will help you take a more thoughtful and strategic approach to your analysis. We cover this in much more depth in our Thinking Like an Analyst course, but let's review it at a high level here as well, because it's extremely relevant to anyone trying to make smart, data-driven decisions, analyst or otherwise. Now, keep in mind that there's still a time and place for more unguided, open-ended, exploratory analysis, but this approach works very, very well, especially for explanatory analysis, where your primary goal is to deliver actionable insights and recommendations. So it all starts by clearly identifying the problem you're trying to solve. And the key here is that before you start thinking like an analyst, you need to think like a business owner. And this involves asking yourself some key questions. What specific problem are you trying to solve? And which business outcomes are you trying to impact? Who are the key stakeholders and how exactly will this help them? And does your approach align with the bigger picture priorities and business strategy? Answering these questions first, which many people fail to do, will help ensure that you align on the project scope and desired outcome from day one. The second step in the framework is all about defining success. And this is where things like measurement planning come into play. It's about asking yourself, what exactly does a successful outcome look like for the business? Is it driving more revenue, increasing employee retention rates, driving better marketing ROI? And then once you define success, which specific metrics or KPIs will help you quantify it, and what data will you need to capture to track those key metrics. That will set you up with a crystal clear roadmap for measuring the success of your efforts. We see so many people, even professional data analysts, skip these first two steps and jump straight into steps three and four because they're so eager to roll up their sleeves and start playing with the data, which often leads to disaster wasted time for both you and stakeholders, lack of focus and clarity, false hopes and expectations, and the list goes on. So if your goal is to work smart, not hard, and make a real, tangible impact, make sure you don't skip these steps. By the time you've reached step three, you should have a clear picture of what success metrics you're trying to impact and the data you'll need to quantify them. Now is the time to start collecting and preparing your data. At this stage, the types of questions you're asking are things like where is the data stored and how can you access it? Are there data quality issues that might skew the analysis? And is the data in the proper format or will it need to be transformed, modeled, or restructured to support your analysis? This step can be one of the more challenging and time-consuming stages in the workflow and typically involves a mix of QA, profiling, data cleaning, and enrichment, like adding new fields or data sources. But if you do this well, it will create a rock solid foundation for your analysis and ensure that you're working with clean, high quality data. Because as they say, garbage in, garbage out. Step four is about finally getting your hands dirty and starting to explore and analyze the data. For most people, this is the fun part because it involves slicing and dicing the data, uncovering interesting patterns and trends, and ideally discovering some meaningful, actionable insights that could directly impact the metrics you're trying to move. So the types of questions you'll likely be asking at this point, which types of views of the data can help support your analysis? Which types of patterns and trends are beginning to emerge as you explore the data? And are you finding any nuggets, any actionable insights that again could help drive those success outcomes? Once you've wrapped the analysis phase, it's time to communicate your findings. This is another mission critical step, especially for explanatory analysis, because success hinges on your ability to clearly communicate what you've found, why it's important, and how it can impact the business. 
One of the most common missteps I see with young analysts is that they over-index on the technical skills. They spend too much time getting fired up about the analysis itself, then completely drop the ball when it comes time to share their findings, especially when they're communicating with non-technical or senior level audiences. At this stage, it's really important to remember that people respond to stories, not data points. So you should be asking yourself how you can craft a narrative to clearly summarize the key takeaways from your analysis. This is a great time to recap your problem statement and measurement plan, summarize your approach, highlight your most compelling insights, and tie it all together into a clear and concise presentation. You'll also be thinking about the most effective ways to communicate your findings through data visualization, which is something we'll talk more about in the next section, and confirming that your insights are clear, compelling, and supported by the data. The final step in our framework is all about advocating for action. When you stop short of this step, you're essentially taking the analysis to the point where you're one step away from the finish line and then leaving it up to your audience to decide what to do from there. Don't make your stakeholders connect the dots on their own. Think about what actionable, data-driven recommendations you can propose and make sure they directly tie to the success outcomes that you care most about. And the cherry on top, which will make stakeholders absolutely love you, would be to propose how you might measure or quantify the business impact of the changes you're proposing. Not only does that prove that you care about the impact to the business, but it shows that you're willing to take accountability as well. Plus, if all goes to plan, now you have an amazing success story to add to the resume. So that's a quick summary of our data analysis framework. And even if you don't apply every single step, hopefully it helps you at least get into a better analytical mindset that you can apply to your own work. If you enjoyed this content and want to see more, we've got a brand new Data Literacy Foundations course, and it's entirely free. You can check it out at mavenanalytics.io. So whether you're an individual looking to build confidence, a leader seeking to empower and upskill your team, or a data professional just trying to stay ahead of the curve, this is the course for you. We've got a lot to cover, so let's dive in.